For this question, we are told to consider a cylindrical specimen of steel alloy, 10 millimeters in diameter, 75 millimeters long, pulled in tension, and we're asked to determine its elongation when a load of 20,000 newtons is applied. So, key information is 10 millimeters in diameter, 75 millimeters long, tension, and that the load is 20,000 newtons. So to solve this question, we know that the sort of approach we're going to need to determine elongation, delta, is to begin by determining the stress. Once we have stress, we're going to need to determine strain. And once we have strain, only then can we calculate elongation. So let's start with the stress. We're actually going to be calculating the engineering stress, which is defined as the force divided by the initial cross-sectional area. If we had a sample that was deforming significantly during testing, that cross-sectional area might be changing, and it might be actually much smaller than the initial. In that case, we'd be calculating the true stress, which is the force divided by the instantaneous area. Let's just calculate the force divided by the initial area, because the load we're using is small enough that plastic deformation should not be occurring yet. So the value that we get for engineering stress is 20,000 newtons divided by the cross-sectional area. Since it's a cylinder, we can use the cross-sectional area of a circle, which will be pi r squared. And we use for r 5 millimeters, since the diameter is 10 millimeters. So let's go ahead and plug in values for this. I find when I plug in my values that I get that our engineering stress is equal to 254 megapascals. Now, how did we end up with the units of megapascals? Well, let's review. A pascal is equal to a newton per meter squared. But we've been dividing newtons per millimeter squared. So if you have meters and you're converting them to millimeters, then it's a factor of 1,000. But to millimeters squared means we have to square this. So really, this is basically saying that we're going to be dividing it by a factor of 1 times 10 to the sixth, which is 1,000 squared. Therefore, we know that newtons per millimeter squared gives us the same units as megapascals, since 1 megapascal equals 1 times 10 to the sixth pascals. Now that we have that, we can go on to calculate our strain, which is the second step of this problem. To determine strain, we could calculate it if we were given the Young's modulus, where stress equals Young's modulus times the strain. So if we knew that we were in the linear elastic portion of the plot, this linear region here, and we were given Young's modulus, then we could calculate strain directly. But since we're not given Young's modulus, we're going to have to read it off this plot. We know that our stress is 254 megapascals. So if this goes up to 1,000, Halfway would be 500, and half of that would be roughly 254. Drawing this line over and dropping a tie line down, we can estimate where it is on this plot. I find, with my best estimate, that it's around 0 0.0025. So now that we have the strain, we should recognize this is actually, again, the engineering strain, since we determined it from the engineering stress. Now that we have this value for strain, we can turn it into an elongation. The calculation for elongation is as follows. Strain equals the final length minus the initial length divided by the initial length. Or in other words, delta L, which is the elongation we're asked to solve for, divided by the initial length. So let's go ahead and plug these values in. 0 0.0025 is equal to delta L, what we're trying to solve for, divided by 75 millimeters. Multiplying both sides by 75 solves for delta L, which equals 0 0.1875 millimeters.